Hello, I am Dr. Tulan Pekny and I am Dr. Anna Stokowska and we will tell you about our findings that could lead to the development of a novel treatment to reduce neurological impairments and improve recovery for survivors of stroke. Stroke is a devastating disease that annually affects about 15 million people worldwide. Stroke most commonly results from the occlusion of a major vessel in the brain. If the occlusion is not rapidly reversed, cells in the infarcted brain region die and are replaced by a cavity. No effective therapy is currently available except for the removal of the occluding blood clot in the acute stage of ischemic stroke, for which only few patients are eligible. Stroke induces repair and plasticity processes that are very similar to those involved in normal learning and include changes in dendritic and axonal branching, as well as changes in synapse number and size. This stroke-induced neuroplasticity is the basis for the recovery of lost functions. Yet about 50% of stroke survivors live with severe long-term disability. There is therefore an unmet need for drug therapies to improve recovery by promoting brain plasticity in the subacute to chronic phase after stroke. The complement system is part of innate immunity that provides an effective first line of defense against invading microorganisms. However, the complement system has a number of non-immune functions in both healthy and diseased brain, including those related to neural plasticity. Previous findings have led us to focus our investigations on the potentially beneficial effects of complement-derived peptide C3A and its receptor in post-ischemic brain. In this study, we asked the following questions. Does C3A, C3A receptor signaling, play a role in post-stroke plasticity? If so, can we target this pathway to improve functional recovery after stroke? To determine the role of C3A, C3A receptor signaling in post-stroke neural plasticity, we induced stroke in the following groups of mice. Mice lacking the C3A receptor, transgenic mice expressing biologically active C3A in reactive astrocytes, and their respective wild-type controls. We found that although the genetic manipulations did not affect the infarct volume, C3A overexpression increased growth-associated protein 43, a marker of synaptic, axonal and glial plasticity in the peri-infarct cortex. C3A receptor deficiency had the opposite effect. Similarly, C3A overexpression increased the density and size of presynaptic terminals in the peri-infarct cortex. Again, C3A receptor deficiency had the opposite effect. To explore the translational potential of these findings, we next tested a pharmacological approach involving intranasal administration of C3A. This route of administration allows for repeated, rapid and non-invasive delivery of peptides to the brain. Daily intranasal treatment of wild-type mice with C3A for 14 days beginning 7 days after stroke robustly increased synaptic density as well as expression of growth-associated protein 43 in peri-infarct cortex. To assess the effect of C3A treatment on functional recovery, we use the so-called cylinder test, which compares the ability of mice to use the affected and non-affected forelimb for support while rearing in a glass cylinder. In another test, called the gridwalk test, we calculated the ratio between the number of faulty steps and total number of steps taken with the affected forepaw. Both tests showed that intranasal treatment with C3A supported faster and more complete motor function recovery, which was sustained beyond the treatment period. We conclude that C3A, C3A receptor signaling, stimulates post-stroke neuroplasticity. Intranasal treatment with C3A receptor agonists is an attractive approach to improve functional recovery even when the treatment is initiated several days after stroke. This would provide a novel treatment option for stroke that goes far beyond current methods of blood clot removal that are limited to the first few hours after symptom onset.